Good morning, my name is Sonia from technologycatalog.com and I would like to welcome you to our new webinar about the new generation of oily water treatment. Before leaving you with Paul Callaghan, the director of oleology, I will briefly introduce you who we are. At uh, technologycatalog.com, we want to make finding technology in the energy industry very easy and immediate, together with all the required support to deploy such technologies. As a matter of fact, a current problem is that there is a very wide range of available solutions which can cause confusion about what are the best technology investment for your business. And we want to solve this problem. Another good point is that, of course, it's a great opportunity to explore new technologies without having to travel far away. Uh, I would like to invite you to visit our website, uh, technologycatalog.com, to find and compare new technologies that will enhance your business, possibly. I will now let the stage to Paul, who will lead this uh, webinar on the newest generation of treatments for oily water. Just to give you general information, the webinar uh, will last around 10 minutes and we're gonna have five final minutes for uh, Q&A. So if you have any of them, please use the chat box on your right and we are gonna give them uh, an answer at the end of the webinar. So I would like to uh, leave the floor to Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, Oleology is an Australia-Asia-based company that uh, works in water treatment and has some other proprietary products which enhance operations in various areas. And the issues that we'll cover, and we'll run across the top of them and be prepared to take uh, questions in some more detail at the end. But uh, oil and water, uh, polishing those to lower levels of compliance, enhanced oil recovery for greater recovery of hydrocarbons, uh, in the refinery and upstream operations. Uh, soluble oil polishing, uh, enhanced operations in bioponds. Removal of mercury from gas in a coalescing system uh, without the need for MRU type large um, mercury recovery units. Um, removal of mercury from water in those applications re requiring further treatment, so filtering and polishing of water uh, from condensate. And then uh, PFAS, for those of you who may be familiar with PFAS in water applications, and we are receiving in Australia at the moment more inquiry from the oil and gas sector on the treatment of PFAS from water as a result of uh, lingering problems that existed from the use of AFFF firefighting foams. Always the issues around CAPEX and OPEX um, and balancing the two of those in conjunction with not just the treatment equipment that's required, but also the discharge compliance, um, emerging contaminants that are potentially liable for uh, future cleanups, um, and then taking into account any future liability that may also need to be assessed as part of the, the overall commercial implications of any technology that are used. We use a MySelex technology in our systems. Uh, MySelex has got a lot of good qualities which are up on the screen there, non-leaching, non-toxic. It's a fixed chemistry. So there's no application or dosing of chemicals to try and meet the incoming uh, contaminant mixture uh, and to adjust the chemistry according to the changing influent. Uh, MySelex is also oil absorbent and hydrophobic. So you end up with a dry waste, which is uh, capable of removing up to three or four times its own weight in hydrocarbon. You can also use it to capture and separate oil from water. That's very applicable down to about five micron oil droplet size, which is far lower than many other systems are capable of doing. We polish water, we remove emulsified and soluble organics uh, in oil droplets down to less than 0.5 micron uh, in diameter. And as I mentioned earlier, we polish PFAS from, from water, which is very difficult to do. And, I've, and we can address a little bit more of that later. What's different about this and its particular application of technology is it's a very small footprint, low energy consumption, very low volume of waste, and it's a robust water treatment. 
that leads to reduced capex and a, and a simpler system that's able to be taken to site as a complete unit for essentially plug and play. Tie-ins at site are limited to uh, the major pipe work or uh, provision of electrical or control systems. This also enables uh, remote, remote operation, um, maintenance and trending are, are better able to be monitored. Uh, integration of management and reporting systems are, are really at the premium. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no chemical dosing. The dry waste is an important part of understanding the need, the need for uh, low cost. Um, we have little, if anything, to worry about in terms of, of uh, future liability as a result of any chemical that may have been used, which is safe today and not safe tomorrow. Whatever we put into the water, we take out of the water um, when we remove the filter from the water. And these are available as either permanent or higher systems. And we've had a number of systems on higher in operation uh, throughout the Asia Pacific region. Um, so the technology comes in the form of filters. It comes in the form of coalescing media. Uh, it's infused uh, permanently. And that, in, that gives the filters their enhanced properties. Um, there's not just a single filter, there's a range of filters for different applications, often used in sequence. Um, so a series of four or five filters or in a PFAS system, maybe up to 10 filters are used in a sequence, which provides a sequential reduction of contaminants, which leads to a very robust system, which ensures compliance of discharge and long service life. Some interesting views of, of water that has been treated uh, via the filtering mechanism. Highly emulsified uh, water is often a bane of the operator's existence and particularly in chemical upsets. Uh, we can break those emulsions and get it down to clean compliant water through the use of filtering. And the filtering systems can often be used only during upset times. So uh, on a FPSO, for instance, water can go through the hydrocyclones in normal operation. When upsets occur, they can be diverted through uh, the filtering skid, which will take care of the upset condition and allow the operators time to bring the upset under control. So there's two notes there. One's oil and water for discharge compliance and the other one's oil and water for recovery enhanced oil recovery. And that system of application uh, is something that we can talk about in more um, detail as required. But just to let people know that there are non-consumable activities which utilize the uh, enhanced oil recovery system, which improves on current performance of nutshell filters, for instance. Um, some visions of enhanced oil recovery uh, and the quantity of oil that's recovered with very little water associated with it. That's seen in the very left hand side. Uh, on the very right hand side is the final water that uh, forms the discharge. Uh, in the centre to the left, the sample shows two levels of colour of uh, oil, that's the oily emulsion that was uh, the starting point for the separation. So we've not only separated out the oil, we've separated the oil from the oily emulsion, which is the lower part of the second from right sample, second from left sample, I should say. And then before polishing is the uh, sample in the middle, the water sample in the middle with the, you can just see some small amounts of sediments in the base that's prior to going through the polishing system, which means there's very little work for the polisher to do, which gives you extended service life on the cartridge filter elements. Some instances of application um, in on offshore and onshore applications. The filtering system on the left-hand side shows six vessels in either duty or standby, or all six vessels in operation in duty mode. 
uh, a higher system like that can treat up to 80 cubic metres per hour, um, used in applications for uh, either maintenance of existing uh, cyclones that may be on, on board where there's limited space for bringing on board a, a piece of equipment to keep uh, operations moving. Um, and then on the right hand side, there's a, a, a vision of uh, oil recovery system uh, with polishing system after that. These can be used for a variety of applications, including the recovery of BTEX um, and so some of the more soluble operations where uh, condensate from gas streams, uh, water condensate from gas streams leads to um, lighter fractions being in the water. So there's a, there's a variety of applications that, that can be covered by a small footprint system uh, utilising uh, the oleology systems with the MySelex technology filters. So in brief, the summary of, of the, uh, the technology, uh, it's oleophilic and hydrophobic polymer, uh, which is infused into the cartridges. Um, you end up with oil-free high recovery rate and recyclable waste byproducts. Uh, they're certified by Lloyd's Register in, in applications where discharge to sea is covered under IMO regulations. Um, certified through a variety of, of certifications and uh, generally with uh, EPAs in different parts of the world has approval. And the significant advantages of low energy consumption for operation, generally a small centrifugal pump drives the entire system. Uh, the media is easy to dispose, so when looking at the total cost of operation, we're now looking at waste water, waste media that is actually dry, and we're not looking at um, evacuating uh, cylinders that are, have um, uh, solid and slurry waste in them. Uh, in many of the applications and in some of the systems we use, we have non-consumable media as well. So very low maintenance and, and simple to operate uh, offshore and onshore. As a comparison to see where that fits in, um, the chart shows the oil droplet sizes, starting on the left-hand side with larger oil droplets and moving to the right-hand side for smaller oil, oil droplets. The MySelex technology process for oil removal, which includes the primary stage of advanced coalescing, which is stage one as shown by the red arrow. The advanced recovery, enhanced oil recovery, which is shown as stage two, and the filtering stage shown as stage three are applicable as demonstrated by the arrows against the backdrop of the different size of oil droplets. And that covers the dispersed oil down to the emulsified and soluble oils. So different applications may be put into processes as they exist to enhance operation by improving, say, a DAF in its operation or assisting with uh, post-cyclone uh, applications for treatment of discharge water by removing uh, smaller oil droplets, which will generally carry through uh, cyclones and separators. So it can be used as either a retrofit or as a, a complete system um, or an enhancement to existing systems. A couple of the other technologies that we'll quickly touch upon is the um, mercury coalescing. So the development of uh, braided systems um, by MySelex has led to the ability to remove from gas streams aerosolized mercury, which generally forms 99% um, of all mercury entrained in, in uh, LNG gas. Uh, that can be removed by coalescing, which is a significant step forward and has enormous cost benefits to the operation. Um, if an MRU is not in place, then the mercury coalescing systems alone are able to do what otherwise would require a significantly large and costly piece of equipment 
in that of the Mercury Recovery Unit to be put in um, at the process further upstream. Uh, the Mercury Coalescing can also be fitted as part of um, the condensate recovery. So that same unit can now do a twofold application. We can recover the hydrocarbon, uh, the oil from the condensate, oil condensate from the gas stream, and we can also remove the mercury in there uh, in the same vessel. Another, another system of operation which we need to talk a little bit about is uh, the PFAS. So those of you that are familiar with uh, the legacy problems as a result of using AFFF firefighting foam, we've developed the uh, process using the MySelect technology for the removal of uh, PFAS, which is highly soluble from water streams. That uh, can also be done in conjunction with hydrocarbons and often hydrocarbons and the residual PFAS uh, contaminants are found in the same uh, areas together. Um, conventional equipment, ion exchange and uh, granular activated carbon have quick breakthrough in the presence of hydrocarbon when they're seeking to remove uh, PFAS. The system developed as a series of filters which sequentially reduce the hydrocarbon and any PFAS uh, in large volumes uh, from the water uh, down to below the ultra low detectable levels, which is uh, less than 0.5 parts per trillion, which can now be achieved by uh, the oleology system incorporating the MySelex technology. That in the end is the, the treatment process, uh, which we're able to bring to the market at the present stage. Um, so oil and gas, mining industry, uh, firefighting foams, ground dewatering, uh, where applications require for remediation. So from treating new, new flows from produced water to retreating existing um, and residual water as a result of ground contamination, uh, there's a process there which is smaller, less expensive for capital, uh, lower operating cost to run, and uh, able to be deployed rather simply uh, as an option. So that is really the, the quick summary for you as, as a, a way of introduction of some new technology. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, that may arise as a result of what we've just briefly run across. Thank you, Paul. It was a very interesting presentation. I see that we already have three questions in the chat box. So starting from Mark, um, is there a maximum oil in the water content of the feed stream for it to work well? Mark, if, if, the, if the feed stream that we're drawing from is uh, say produced water then and we're going through a cyclone then um, we can take hydrocarbon in levels of up to uh, 2000 parts per million and reduce that to below detectable levels if it's um, and and for shorter periods because what we're really considering in that instance is an upset condition for uh, treatment of long long term treatment of uh, low levels um anything in that um say 30 parts per million down to 10 parts per million for overboard discharge um is very achievable for long long term removal mm, uh, then a uh, second question is from Roma. Um, how are the filters slash waste disposed of at the end of this process? Hi, Roma. The, the filters are able to be uh, stored. They're dry waste, so it makes removal of them easy. Um, if, if in offshore uh, applications, they can be put into uh, waste removal, treated in the same way as uh, oil contaminated waste and taken to shore for for treatment, they can also be compressed uh, to reduce the volume as well. Um, on shore, they can be incinerated and 
uh, use in uh, waste to energy recovery. Um, and they have, I guess, the simplest ways of, of removal. If it's for PFAS treatment, uh, some of the preferred methods are either deep burial, um, but principally in Australia, the preferred method is thermal oxidation, which then breaks down PFAS to its elemental forms uh, and leaves zero waste. Um, then uh, for a question, um, what is the lifetime of MySex filters? Uh, the Mycelex filters have an indefinite shelf life. Um, it's a it's a curing process which is not permanently cured, which gives it its its capacity. So indefinite shelf life, and then uh, when in water, the Mycelex is inert. It's actually hydrophobic, so the cartridges don't wet, and so they can they've got a very long operational life. Okay, um, then from Colin, uh, do you have any case studies you can share on Technology Catalog? Uh, we certainly can. We can provide some case studies for you. Uh, is there any particular area, Colin, in, in either mercury treatment, oil removal, enhanced oil recovery, or PFAS treatment that you would be uh, more interested in than others? Uh, we, can, we can certainly assist with um, providing a wide range of case studies or um, hone in on some particular areas that you might like. And then I would say the last question for this session uh, from Henry, uh, what daily volumes of produced water can your solution treat? Um, the, the sky is the limit. We're actually working on a, a system at the moment which uh, is 90,000 barrels uh, of water per day. So it's really, and there's there's a whole range, uh, Henry, of, of possible options in how to best utilize that, including taking partial streams, uh, full stream, and being able to enhance the service life as a result of only removing the required amount of hydrocarbon uh, in a partial stream treatment before uh, bringing it back into the full stream to achieve the discharge compliance levels that are required. Uh, um, Colin uh, specified uh, turnaround and shutdown oily water treatment. Yes, we, we can certainly provide you some information on those, Colin. Uh, that is quite straightforward. Okay. Um, then I would read the very last question for today. Um, so what are the current outlets for mercury filters? Uh, well, the mercury filters are able to remove, and, and mercury is a, a long discussion in itself. So in terms of, in terms of removal, um, up to 99.9% .9 of mercury recovery in its aerosolized form. Uh, further to that, the mercury reductions are able to be achieved by uh, further downstream performance. But I can send some further information on that to you, Tristan, if you would like. Okay, so, um, well, I would like to, of course, thank you, Paul, for being here with us today and also thank all our attendees. We are going to share the materials used in the webinar together with the link to rewatch it whenever you want. Um, so, of course, if you have any questions, so you want to uh, have a deeper knowledge of the technology, you can always head to uh, our website, technologycatalog.com. And uh, once again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Paul, of course. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.